but we ain't gonna make this long, fam. I just wanted to say, is there within the Grand Canyon an enigmatic system of tunnels that is evidence of the ancient Egyptian voyage to America? Well, all right. I don't know about the ancient. All right, look. It's cool. But what I'm saying is that, remember we went through this about uh, Kincaid working for the, being hired for the Smithsonian, Smithsonian hiding all the evidence of, of our ancient antiquities and even the fact that Kincaid ever worked for him. But remember, we revealed all that. So y'all go back to that, jump into that, because we revealed that. So they sent on May on 1909, mm -hmm. front page story in the Arizona Gazette. Remember, we went through all that on an archaeological, archaeological expedition in the heart, Shekina, in the heart of the Grand Canyon funded by the Smithsonian Institute. So y'all know anytime the Smithsonian, listen, man. Listen, man. I talked to this one, told you best, man. All these... Listen, man, all these people, you know, that comes talking about his story, you got to dodge your own hodge. All these people that come talking about his story, make sure you dodge your own hodge because it's, it's getting real. It's getting very, really, really real. And you got to watch out for the nation. You gotta watch out. I mean, come on, man. You have to read because follow no man. Your king is a walk. Follow no man. So, you gotta read and you gotta embody it. But you gotta follow Yahshua, man. You gotta follow Yahshua. Not follow Yahshua to that degree. No, no, no. Seriously, follow Yahshua to that degree. But he's gonna show you how to interpret the law. Because evidently, we need it, right? We need it. It's obviously, it's evident. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. So yeah, so I even think, uh, yeah, so then they turned around and I think in 1950, they messed around and somebody killed Kincaid in a car accident, in a car accident. So it wasn't the fact that now they're calling the Egyptian artifacts, but they're just mean ancient. When they say Egyptian, they just mean ancient because they're trying to hide the fact that this was Egypt. Egypt was over here. So today, over 5 million tourists visit the Grand Canyons each year. You would thus expect that if anything was hidden in the Grand Canyons, it would thus since long have been uncovered. That's bullshit. You see how they do that? Because, you know, we done bring, we done, we've been to, to plenty of canyons. And you know, they only let you go to certain, through certain passages through. You know, they, they've they already built uh, a route for you to take through the canyon. So it's very hard to get off track. So man, but y'all dig into this, man. Y'all dig into that. I'm not gonna drop the link because y'all can just go back to that video. But they're still saying that through the articles. I know I dropped about six chapters on this, maybe even more, I think. Precisely, distinctively, let you know what ancestors was in the canyons. Who were the, uh, the researchers going over there to uh, figure out the drought, showed you the dragon lines, went inside the canyons for the, for the tour, uh, and actually gave a, a narrative of what was actually in the canyons now. Our ancestors were living at some point, were living in these canyons where there were, I mean, there were 200 square feet 
rooms, master bedrooms and stairways that were spiraling. Man, it's real spill, man. It's, these ancient lands, it's, this old world is, has always been very fruitful. All right, so y'all check that out. Now, I also want to cover, because this is it's been a lot of, uh, there's also been a talk about this DNA, this DNA shit. This DNA, you even got, you know, uh, people from uh, Ghana and different places, Syria, talking about um, DNA. And you also had this Warren chick saying that she's also was some um, was some part of uh, some part indigenous to Americas. The senator Ann Warren, and so then you had uh, you had uh, Trump debuke her, right? Dubuque that, and then you had somebody from the Indian tribe dubuque that also. Say so there's, there's no way possible, but even so, I did about two articles or two uh, videos on this a minute back about DNA as a hoax, DNA uh, ancestry, DNA as a hoax, and all went all the way back to the colleges over at Cambridge University where they actually even cut out a sequence of the um, foundational DNA sequence from the woman, which is the melanated woman. And then they took some of the mitochondrial DNA, that means a woman's DNA, from an actual so-called white, <coughs> what we would call Neanderthal woman, and sewn it or grafted it <coughs> excuse me, into the foundational DNA sequence <coughs> or used for Cambridge University. You believe that? <clears throat> this was done in the 80s. And I gave you all the literature on that. So y'all go back and check that out. But so now it's relevant because you got all these cats talking about their DNA and where it goes back to and all these things when you already had uh, even the actual... I, matter of fact, I'm not even going to get into it. This is a young brother that's, uh, that's doing his thing, man. He's tribal bound and... Uh, He's a real brother and uh, he's indigenous, best believe. So I don't even have to do the video, man. I want to show love to this brother. This is Ab, AB, this is Ab TV. And um, I, I, I found him actually through uh, through our brother, Wena when when Boykin. All right, Wena Boykin. Uh, he be hitting you over the head with some real spill. And um, and some in indigenous Ruach, but what I'm thinking about is Corey Mayo. Our brother Corey Mayo, you know how, you know, where he started and how he gets down. And he's always rocking that indigenous and hitting you over the head with that Jerusalem all day and that Mexico, that Mexican. All right, so the thing is, y'all know that's the Yucatan, that's 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 the Maya, that's us, that's you. You already know how I do. All right, that's Toll Texas, that's Toll Teca. All right, but the thing is, you know that's all tribe because we land by. All right, it's got to do with the Creator. It's got to do with the land. This got to do with the Ruach, the vibration. This got to do with Huey Ma, Kesekot. But it's all relevant. But Ab, new on the scene, I like his uh his format. But I want I want him to allow him to hit you over the head. We gonna go out with Ab, man. He hitting you over the head. This is uh 16 minutes. We gonna play majority of. It. It's very information. It's raw. You got the realness. 
So it's all about that rule. So remember, man. Just not the laws is gonna get you there. It's all about that rule. All right, and I think I said enough. But um, so let's check out app. Let's check out app. And once again, y'all make sure y'all getting over to that four three two. Y'all make sure y'all getting over to that four three two. Y'all know that, all right? Y'all make sure you getting over there. This is the wall of protection. This is the wall of protection. Y'all make sure y'all getting over to that 432. This is love for Israel. This is love for Israel. Ain't no dummies over here, man. This that Ruach. And I'm sure it's a whole bunch of Israel with that Ruach. But yeah, y'all get over there, man. Y'all get in there because I mean, shit. Yo, so the real probably over there right now, dropping lit for you. Got we dropping lit for you. Peace to all our aqua priests. Y'all know who they are. It's a beautiful thing. Now it's all about truth. And it's all about Shaquem. So I want to get back into this official and statistical register of the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. Because what I want to do is go, oh, actually, we yeah, have the millions. All right, so we'll go over again that right here they call it the native dominion. So... This is when the territory, which is now the state of Mississippi, right, was first explored by white men. It was owned and occupied by the following tribes of Indians. Or what you call, what we call indigenous. The Natchez, the Choctaws, the Chickasaws, the Luxi, Pascagoulas, the Chickamauas, the Tunicas, and the Yazos, the Chachumas, the Chachumas. The most numerous and powerful tribes were the Chickasaws and the Choctaws. The former lived in the northern, in the latter, in the central, in the southern parts of the state. The Natchez Indians live along the Mississippi River in the present countries of Adams, Claiborne, Jefferson, and Wilkinson. The Biloxi, the Pascagoula occupied the Gulf coast country. The Tunicas and the Yazoo's tribes had their hunting grounds along the Yazoo River. The Chachumas lived in the eastern part of the state. So that's from what they know. Okay, because you got to remember this is historic. But this is a little bit accurate to what he knows. So now the Spanish Dominion was from 1512, remember the, the Columbus 1452, 1492, right? 1312 to 1699, Spain by the right of discovery claimed nearly all the great continent by their right of discovery, right? All the continent of North America, which was given the name Florida by the early Spanish navigators and explorers. The title to the country was rather general and undefined, but remained unchallenged until the coming of the English and the French. So they're saying we were unchallenging to the English and the French, but you know that was a lie. What is now the state of Mississippi remained nominal nominally under the dominion of Spain until 1699 when the French under Pierre Lamont de Beville made a settlement in Biloxi. The kings of Spain hence of Mississippi from 1512 to 1699 where Ferdinand V, Charles I, 
Philip the second, Philip the third, and fourth, and Charles the second. All right, so you know these lands were took under all these kings, right? So then after that, you got the French Dominion from 1699 to 1763. This is where the French came in and invaded your shit. In 1699, Mississippi became a possession of France by actual settlement and was called Louisiana. With the seat of government in Biloxi from 1699 to 1711, the settlements of Louisiana were under the control of governors of New France or Canada as follows. All right. In 1711, Louisiana was made an independent government responsible directly to the crown and the seat of the colonial government was established at Mobile. The following governors ruled the country of representatives of France. Then you got all these cats right here. Read them. Louisiana was now by virtue of the Treaty of Paris entered into the 10th day now this is the English Dominion in 1762 to 1781. By virtue of the Treaty of Paris entered into the 10th day of February, 1763 between England, Spain, and France. England gained much of the territory within the present limits of the state of Mississippi, which was the province of West Florida. The following royal governors ruled the province during the English Dominion of 18. Now, and then you have 1781 to 1798, again, the Spanish Dominion. This is again the Spanish Dominion. Now, instead of this Portuguese, this is that, that European Spain. In the summer of 1772, Spain had declared war against England. Don Bernardo de Galvez, the Spanish governor, attacked the English province of West Florida and made it part of the possessions of Spain in America. By May 9, 1781, the military and civil commanders of the Natchez district under the rule were as follows. So this is the military and civil commanders of the Natchez district. Under the Spanish rule were as follows. Then we got all these cats right here. Okay, the seat of the Spanish government for the Natchez district was at Natchez. American Dominion, by virtue of the Treaty of San Lorenzo, which was made October 1779, the Natchez district became a part of the United States. The Mississippi Territory was formed by the Act of Congress, April 7, 1790. All right, so this is the Treaty of San Lorenzo, Lorenzo all right, in 1795 of October. The Natchez District became part of the United States. The Mississippi Territory was formed by Act, all right, in April 1798. For more details, you got to go somewhere. So now when you get into that, and we talk about So now, when you talk about this native dominion, now you have to understand that when these people came, even the Spanish dominion, when they sent white people, right? When they sent so-called white people to do their bids, these kings sent white people, these black kings sent white people to do their bids. There was Greeks what we say black Greeks already in the city. Those black Greeks is what we talk about when we talk about Jews. We're already in the city and we had already uh, picked up on Greek, Grecian cultures, Hellenistic Grecian cultures. Man. So at the time at this invasion of 1512, we are already invaded uh, 
They had already built 30 Greek cities. In the Americas. All right, so man, let's move right along. Elijah filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, naysayers, don't get scared and try to run away. You know, Holy Ghost only means the Spirit. Spirit only means Ruach. When we revert back to the Hebrew language. Now, you got to remember what Toriak said, that we had to become Greek. We could no longer. There was a time where it was against the law to even be Jewish, Hebrew. So therefore, we had to be Greek and take on Greek names, right? Like Titus. Filled with the Holy Ghost. What may not one man do in one brief life? If he is willing to simply, to simply be a living conduit pipe through what, through which the power of Hawa may descend to men. What may not one man do in one brief life? If he is willing to be simply a living conduit pipe through which the power of Hawa may descend to men. There is no limit to the possible usefulness of such a life. There on one hand is the oceanic fullness of Hawa. Here on the, on the other are the awful need and desolation of men, guilty, weak, bankrupt, deceased, diseased. All that is required is a channel of communication between the two. No, not me and you, through you and Hawa. And when that channel was made and open and kept free from the silting sand, there goes that sand again. There will ensue one great, plenteous, and equitable flow of power carrying the fullness of Hawa to the weary emptiness of man. Why should thou not be such a channel to you, to the listener and me the reader? There is a splendid illustration of this in the life of Elijah. Elijah. of which we are now taking our far or farewell. For more than a hundred years, the tide had been running strongly against the truth of Hawa. Idolatry has passed from the worship of Jeroboam's calves to that of Baal and Astaroth with the, with the licentious orgies and hideous rites which gathered around the ancient worship of the forces of nature. The system was maintained by immense organization of willy priests who had settled down upon the national life like a fungus growth, striking its roots into the heart, Shekinah. The court was in its favor. The throne was occupied by an effeminate man. The weak tool of this unscrupulous and beautiful wife, the Lady Macbeth of Jewish Hebrew history. Hawa's altar were thrown down, his prophet silenced and in hiding 
his faithful worshipers, a mere handful, whose existence was so secret as to be known only to him. The lamp of truth had been overturned, and there was only a tiny spark of light feebly burning to show where once the light of true religion brightly shone. Into such a state of things, Elijah came unharmed from his native trans Jordanic hills, a highland and kept and polished, unaccustomed to the manners of a court or the learning of schools. Withal, a man weak where we are weak, tempted where we are tempted, of like passions with ourselves. And at once the tide began to turn. The progress of idolatry received a decisive check. The existence and power of Hawal were vindicated. New courage was infused into a timid remnant of true hearted, true hearted Shekinah disciplines. Altars were rebuilt, colleges were opened for the training of Hawa's youth. A successor was appointed and an impetus generations or an impetus given to the cause of truth, which was felt for many generations. Perhaps the greatest tribute to Elijah's power with his contemporaries is in the fact that his name and work stood out in bold and clear outline for 900 years after his death. Surpassing the whole school of Jewish prophets as the Jung as the Jung Frarius, the Jung Frarius her snow-clawed peaks above the giants of her chain and furnishing a model with which to set forth the power and courage of the forerunner of our Hawa. The Ruach, speaking in Malachi, the last of the prophets, will find no better symbol of the pioneer of the Mashiach, Hawashua, than to compare him with famous prophet who centuries before had swept to heaven in the chariot of flame. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and ter terrible day of Hawa come. Of Hawa come. The bright angel Gabriel standing 400 years after amid the ascending incense of the holy place found no easier method of conveying to the aged priest the type of wondrous son that was to gladden his old age, then to liken him to Elijah. He shall go before his face in the spirit and the power of Elijah. We know Elijah, Hawa put him over the tabernacle and hope. Elijah walked with our shoe and Moshe and Aaron and Fiends. So, man, it's, it's a Yapa flow, a Yapa thing. Whenever a notable religious movement was stirring through the land, the people were accustomed to think that the prophet of Carmel had again returned to earth. And thus the deputation asked John the Baptist saying, art thou Elijah? And when a mightier than John had set all men musing in their hearts, Shekinah. As the disciples told our Hawa, many of the common people believed that the long, the long expectation of centuries was realized and that Elijah was risen again. It was commonly believed that no other 
no other of woman born was great enough to receive the Messiah and that he would anticipate his event by an interval of three days during which he should proclaim in a voice heard over all earth peace, happiness, and salvation. That's salvation for Israel. All over. All these things are evidence of the, of the tower and greatness of Elijah's character and work. With all the failures and mistakes to which such natures are prone, he was a great man and did a noble work. And the secret of all was to be found not in the intrinsic qualities, but in the fact that he was filled with the Ruach. Let us pause here and ask ourselves if we can give our thoughtful assent to the statement. If we cannot, we must count much of our time and labor in these chapters wasted. For our one aim has been to establish this point. But if we can, then, as we close these chapters of stirring sacred biography, we may resolve that we will never rest until we too are filled with the Ruach. We will never rest satisfied in being intimidators merely. But we will seek to be filled with that same Ruach, that same Ruach of the 70 elders, that same Ruach of Moshe, that same Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach.